Over the last few lessons, we have explored the basic building blocks of human nutrition. We started by talking about the types of energy that our body needs in the form of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. And then we moved on to talk about micronutrients, which we don't need in large amounts, and they don't provide our body directly with energy, but those vitamins and minerals are crucial for the structure and function of different processes within the body. Now it is time for our final nutrient, water. In this lesson, we're going to learn more about water, why we need it, where we get it, and how much we need. When we talk about water in the human body, you often hear a statistic that the human body is mostly made up of water. Anywhere from 45 to 75% of the body is water, but that doesn't mean free water. Rather, water is part of every single structure within the body. And most of the water is actually inside of our cells called intracellular. The rest is fluid between different spaces. It's interesting to note that younger bodies are made up of more fluid relative to older bodies, and people with more muscle mass also tend to be made up of more water. While water doesn't directly provide our body with any energy, it is crucial for almost every single structure and function within the human body. We ultimately can put the purpose of water into two different categories. We need water for structure. We also need it for different functions. On the structure side, water contributes to um, the spinal and brain fluid that ultimately act as shock absorbers for those vital organs so they aren't just bouncing around getting injured. It also cushions different joints and organs. Water makes up the space inside and between cells so that there can actually be movement within the body. Water makes up the fluid of blood itself, and that allows for nutrients to be moved throughout the body, as well as uh, delivering oxygen and other vital things. On the function side, we need water to help create and maintain mucus. While that word can really let people chuckle, mucus has a really crucial function in acting as a barrier in keeping pathogens out of the body. Water and other fluids are also part of our urine and fecal matter, and that helps remove waste from our body. Water and the movement of fluid throughout our body is also really crucial for temperature regulation, the movement of blood throughout the body um, to the surface, back to the core, as well as the dissipation of fluid by way of sweat that helps with cooling as well. When people think about how much water they need to drink in a day, often their attention goes to the visible ways in which they're losing fluid, which people commonly think of just as sweating. But even if you're not sweating a lot, you're, we still need a pretty significant amount of fluid for different functions and processes because we lose water in more ways than just sweat. For most people, at least half of their fluid needs are, or half of their fluid loss is actually through things like breathing, through our urine, our stool, as well as just casual cooling that we don't really have any sensation of. In total, the human body can go through anywhere from 80 to 100 fluid ounces in a given day. That's about 10 to 12 cups or 10 to 12 eight ounce cups. Now, the, the amount of fluid that you use from your lose by way of urination, as well as through sweating, can really vary person to person. We're going to talk about sweat rates quite a bit more in our next lesson, um, but it's worth noting here that the average person can sweat anywhere from 0.8 to 1.5 liters of fluid in an hour of exercise. And for people who are athletes and more conditioned, they're going to lose upwards of, they can lose upwards of three or more liters in an hour. That's about a hundred ounces of water in an hour. Now, we've talked a lot about losses. These are some really big numbers. We do not actually need to replace all of that fluid with drinks. While our body does need an incredible amount of fluid, we don't want to just be drinking that much water in and of itself. We get fluid from a wide variety of different sources. So please don't come away from this lesson trying to drink 10 to 12 eight ounce cups in a day. That may be more than what you actually need. We ultimately give our body water, yes, through drinks, um, but also with food. And our body does have the ability to create a bit of water as a byproduct of metabolism as well. 
People do tend to get most of their fluids from beverages, things like water, milk, juice, coffee, tea, seltz, or soda. That all counts towards your fluid needs to a degree, and as a result, counts towards hydration. Food can provide upwards of 20% of our fluid needs every day, because as we've briefly described in some of our other lessons, when we eat food, we're not only getting nutrients and energy, there's also water as part of that whole experience. Our fruits and our vegetables are almost primarily water. Other sources like meat are also a really good source of water. And some of our mixed dishes also have water incorporated, like soups, for example. Sometimes you'll hear people arguing that something is more hydrating than something else, or that certain drinks are going to be dehydrating. Like much of nutrition, there is a degree of truth as well as nuance here. Every beverage is going to provide fluid for the body, all of them. Not all beverages are going to stay with the body as long, and that's what ultimately affects kind of the hydration status. How well a beverage hydrates is usually evaluated based upon how much fluid you take in and then how much is lost in the hours that follow, uh, through, usually through urination. In general, water has been shown to be a pretty great tool for hydration, but when you add things like sodium, protein, and even a little bit of carbohydrate, that actually helps the fluid stay on the body longer and we don't lose as much of it by way of the kidneys. Interestingly enough, if you eat a lot of fiber or a lot of protein in your day, that's actually going to increase your total fluid needs, but I digress. Um, there was a study in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that tried to develop a hydration index uh, based upon someone's intake and their urine output a few hours later. It's not a perfect measure because there's certainly lots of variables that can impact how much you're losing in terms of kidney function. But the study was interesting because it showed that um, milk products had the lowest urine output a few hours later relative to other beverages, but that other drinks like cola, um, diet cola, hot tea, cold tea, coffee, orange juice, and even sparkling water, and even sports drinks were fairly similar to regular plain old water. Now there's a little bit of fine print here. Um, certain chemicals, when consumed in high doses, are going to stimulate the kidneys to increase urine production. Um, so chemicals such as caffeine, the higher the dose of those chemicals, the more fluid the body is ultimately going to lose as a result. Not to mention, it can really impact your nervous system. So if we exclusively rely upon beverages that have a lot of these chemicals like caffeine, there is a chance that we might lose more fluid than what we're actually bringing in. But in small doses, they can count towards your fluid needs. Now, <laughs> I am not encouraging that anyone go out there and live on soda or energy drinks. We do need to take into consideration the totality of the product and how it's impacting us and how it aligns with our life and our overall needs. If we were to try to meet all of our fluid needs with soda, for example, you're going to probably overload other systems of the body with the caffeine, and it also has a pretty high amount of sugar. Um, and all of that can be overwhelming and a bit disruptive to the body if done chronically. That doesn't mean you can never have those products, but we shouldn't rely on it as our only hydration source. Water is still one of the best ways to meet our hydration needs but you can consider other beverages towards that overall fluid target. So adding milk and or plant-based beverages can also be a helpful way to not only meet fluid needs, but also provide other nutrients like calcium and protein. So how much should you drink in a day? We don't really have the data on that, to be perfectly honest. There's a lot of individual variation, both in terms of biology and how a body functions, as well as a lot of environmental factors that can really influence what you need. So for example, if you're living in really dry climates, um, high altitude, or even really cold climates, people's fluid losses can actually be significantly greater. You know, in, for every nutrient, we have something called the DRI or the Dietary Reference Intake that was established by the Institute of Medicine. But because there's not enough research on fluid in particular, they don't actually have a goal like we do with vitamins and minerals. As a result, you hear all kinds of recommendations all over the internet. 
For many, many years, people were told to drink eight to eight ounce glasses of water every single day. But there's actually no evidence to back that up. (laughs) It's not based upon the DRIs. It's theorized that that may have come from this idea that for every, we need a milliliter of water for every calorie that people consume. So if we have this 2000 calorie target that tends to be generalized for the population, that would be about 2000 millimeters, milliliters of water, um, which is 64 ounces, or that's eight, eight ounce glasses. But um, current experts really think that that might be more water than many people actually need. So the recommendation now is to have four to six eight ounce glasses per day. But certainly fluid needs can vary a lot person to person. It's really not a one size fits all kind of a deal. How much water or how many drinks you need to take in depends upon what you're eating and drinking, as well as things like your body composition, your energy level, your energy activity level, what you're doing every day, how your body does thermoregulation, how much sweat you're losing, the environment you, that you live in, and so many more factors. In general, we do not need to be obsessive with how much we drink in a day. Most people can just use thirst as their guide, meaning if you're thirsty, drink something. Keep a water bottle handy to make that convenient. The only time drinking to thirst may not be as relevant is in athletic situations, but we're going to talk a little bit more about that in our next lesson. You can use your urine color as a very general indicator of how hydration is going for your body. In general, the color of our urine should be a light yellow color, not colorless, not clear. That can actually be a sign that you're taking in too much water. The darker the color of the urine, maybe the more you might benefit from having a little bit more fluid in your routine. But this this color of the urine can also vary by kidney function as well as medication. So again, there's some individual variation and nuance here. But in general, it's an okay indicator to help you understand how things are going. When it comes to hydration, it's like any other nutrient where there is a spectrum or a continuum. We don't want to have too much, but we also don't want to have too little and be dehydrated. Having too much is just as dangerous and problematic as having too little. We do want to find the sweet spot. This chart gives you a very gentle indication of some of the signs and symptoms that people might experience along the continuum, but please know it is not a standalone reference. Um, these are, you can, you'll notice that some of the signs of too little are j- very similar to the signs of too much. So we have to put the context into consideration, how much we've been drinking, the conditions that we're in and so on. Now this can feel like a lot of information. Please know your body is not super fragile. There's not this tightrope that we're walking on that we have to get this perfectly right. We do not have to perfectly match the ounces in and ounces out. Most bodies are very good at doing that again, just through thirst and eating. Um, Our bodies are very resilient, very responsive, and they work really hard to try to maintain homeostasis. But that being said, if we're taking in an excessive amount of fluid over a very short period of time, for example, if you're drinking like a gallon of water in an hour and there's no other nutrients coming in, you can disrupt the balance of electrolytes in the body, resulting in a condition called hyponatremia or low sodium. And that is a very dangerous situation that can impact your organs and can even be life-threatening. It's why we don't want to force or push hydration excessively, especially if we're not taking in other nutrients um, or electrolytes. Dehydration can also be a problem. Um, Very subtle signs are going to be things like having the urge to drink, a little bit of dry mouth, or an itch in the back of the throat. Um, If things progress, you might see more things like a headache, confusion, dizziness, and even weakness. Um, Some people have muscle cramps or they'll see declines in their performance. Um, If you're in the middle of physical activity and you were in hot conditions and you were sweating and you're still in those hot conditions, but suddenly the sweat stops and you start to feel cold or even feeling chills and the weather hasn't changed, that's also can be a sign that you're dehydrated and need to get in more fluid. Whew. So it's a lot, <laughs> um, and that, but that's going to be a wrap on the hydration front and the reading for this lesson will go into the details a little bit more. 
Um, If you take nothing else away from this lesson, please know we lose fluid in a variety of ways, not just sweating. We do need to replace the fluid that's been lost, and we can do that both with many different types of beverages as well as food. There's no hard and fast number about how many cups or how many ounces of water a person should drink. There's a lot of individual variation based upon a variety of factors. Um, The latest but very general recommendations are the four to six eight ounce cups of fluid a day. Some people might need more, some people might need less. In general, most people can use thirst as an indicator of when and how much to drink. The color and the frequency of urination are also kind of okay secondary indicators, but both have some individual variation as well. We do want to make sure we have enough fluid every day and in different conditions, but we don't want to push the intake so high that we're impacting our sodium balance. Again, this isn't about perfection. We are not that fragile. We're quite resilient, but it's being thoughtful of kind of how we're approaching our fluid needs and making sure that we are listening to our body and the signs and the cues that it's giving us. So as I mentioned, the reading for this course is going to go into a bit more detail about hydration basics. And then in our next lesson, we're going to talk more about special topics in hydration. So let's get started.